What is going on, nerds and nerdettes? It's your boy, Stevie B, with this week's haul video. I tell you, I gotta tell you, I wasn't feeling it today. I almost didn't want to do a video today. I'm just, just tired, I'm worn out, and it's been a, it's been a long weekend. A lot of running, and and it ain't over yet. Still got more stuff to do. But um, we did get some new furniture for the house, so uh, I was excited for that. We brand new living room furniture, so I out with the old, in with the brand new. It's all gonna match now. Yeah, I mean, we're just styling and profiling. No, I mean, but yeah. So man, in the news today or this week, what have I missed so far? Oh, of course the. More on the CGC thing. I guess they caught a couple of employees, husband and wife, tag teaming it, stealing books, and bumping the grades up and then reselling them and everything. And everybody was thinking, oh, it was an inside job. Uh, the, the, you know, the reholder gate was an inside job. And uh, I don't think so. Not an inside job. Totally. I think everybody's pretty much figured out that it was a completely uh, I, uh, separate incident. Um, it, I mean, honestly, if it was an inside job, that would have been a, that would, that would have been a Christmas present for CGC. Cause then they could say, oh, it was employees and we got them. We got the guy on the outside they were working with. We got all the books that they tampered with. It's all contained and now we can move on and Y'all can get them warm fuzzy feelings about them 9.8s again until our 9.9 nine, uh, pre-screens come out and then your 9.8s are going to be trash. But anyway, I ain't going to go back into it. Um, we all know what CGC is and we know what they do. And it's just a, it's just a matter of time. But what about this Vince McMahon thing? Boy, I'm telling you, it just gets worse and worse. Uh, I did a little th thing about it already, so I won't get into it much more. I'm actually going to watch Monday Night Raw tonight for the first time probably in a long time. Because I'm kind of curious and um, about the main event of WrestleMania. I don't know if y'all heard about that. Um, Cody Rhodes wins the Royal Rumble. To you know, to complete his story and and you know and uh, fulfill his destiny, I guess, or, or whatever. And, and then the Rock comes in and unceremoniously, unceremoniously boots him out of the main event and takes the spot. Fans are pissed. Fans are pissed. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that WWE. Triple H and the powers that'll that be over there are probably going to backpedal on that and go, okay, we're going to put him back in there some at some point. I don't think they're going to go through with it. The Rock does not need to further any storylines. He's a part-timer. He is a pay-to-play legend contract wrestler. Does not, need, does not need to be bumping other people out of their spots. So, it was a pretty dumb move. Anyway, um, what else? Carl Weathers. Damn, Carl Weathers died. Um, Chubbs, or um, who I know him better as, Apollo Creed. Oh, Lord, we just celebrities are just dropping like flies. Um, I was a fan of his work. Uh, I was a fan of him as Apollo Creed. That was some fantastic work in Rocky movie. But so um, R.I.P. And but anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Too much depressing. Now we got all the depressing shit out of the way. Let's get into some good stuff. Got some good stuff. Well, once we get past the, you know, my midtown pickups, because you know that's the same shit everybody else is getting. But maybe not. Alright, first up. Honestly, I don't know why I got these. I think I just got them because I wanted I wanted the covers. Um, I, I I have no excuse for getting these, but this I think this is the second printings 
of uh, the Batman Robin Lives um, that came out in Batman number 428 reprint with the alternate endings. I, I picked them up, I guess, for the covers. I, I don't know because, uh, honestly, this whole thing was a huge disappointment. Um, I think this needs to lead to a mini-series that kind of goes into what would happen if Jason Todd had lived and and move it and give it a little more perspective because basically all this did was change one panel in the whole book and the rest of the book went on as planned he's alive he's in the hospital okay and then the rest of the book was the same so it really didn't honestly didn't uh change anything or whatever but i don't know but anyway next up i still haven't started reading this um, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this. I really am. I promise. But this is uh, Wolverine number 42. And this is uh, part two of the Sabretooth Wars, I believe. Um, so, and I got, and I got this cover. Um, I'm, I'm a huge Sabretooth fan. Can't wait to see him in the MCU. Uh, I can't have a feeling they're going to just... Uh, he's going to be more of a in the in the Deadpool 3 movie he's probably going to be uh, more of an easter egg than than necessarily an appearance so I ain't too stoked about that and then next up Superboy or Superboy hey I told you I told you guys I'm tired Spider-Boy number 3 Yes, I'm still picking him up. And yes, I like this character. And all you guys ran out there and started yelling about, oh, you people are stupid buying FOMO books. Who cares? This character's cool. I like it. It's still it's still hanging in there in spite of you all. So uh, next up, last from my Midtown pickups. Of course, we can't, we can't have a week without... That foily goodness. Oh yeah, and we got we got um Amazing Spider-Man 252. Oh that thing's gorgeous. I love that. The foil facsimile. I'm loving these things. Loving them. Don't care if they're money grabs. Don't care. And that was it for the Midtown stuff. Uh next up, I got a little AOK -okay from my buddy Jason Todd, um, he, for those of you who don't know, he's a regular customer that comes in at my store all the time, and, and he is also into comic books. I, I think he gives me credit for, for reigniting his love of comics, and so he brought me some books that were, he said, happy birthday, you know, I know, I, I know how long does my birthday last? But, it, you know, it's been three weeks now. <laughs> I, but it was cool of him. And this first up, I thought this was cool. From the pages of Wizard Magazine. How to Draw. Free Comic Book Day booklet. I miss this magazine. Oh, Wizard. I bring the magazine back. Bring the magazine back. It was such a good magazine. I don't know why it... It, it it tanked and why they went out of business, but I oh, loved it. Loved it. That one and Toy Fair for the action figure collectors. Loved them both. Um, and then we got Batman Dark Detective Madness number 406. Pretty cool. And then he brought me Redneck number one, but I think this is a I want to say that, the, that this was a second or third printing. Um, when I I kind of looked it up. Oh, wait. Here it is. Uh, duh. Yeah, it's a second printing. But it was a second printing, but still cool. Then this really cool um, Catwoman number 59. Love the cover. I'm trying to read who it is. Terso Cons. 
Cool cover. Never even heard of that artist, to be honest with you. Oh, and then this one. De Batman the Detective, number one. This is the first appearance of Squire in Equilibrium. But more importantly... That's right. Signed by Brian Boland. This is the Brian Boland cover, and it is signed. Love that. Everybody knows I'm a Brian Boland fan. Bigger fan of his Wonder Woman work, I'm not going to lie. But that is still cool. I didn't even know he did a Batman cover. But, so, that is cool. I mean, I knew he... I didn't know he did these covers. I knew he did. He did a couple Joker covers, and I know he's done a few Batman-related uh, covers, but... That one was just cool. And then next, he got me a, he brought me a Batman Detective Comics um, number 826. Man, this was just a nasty cover. I really like that cover. That old black and white got Robin a gun to Robin's head. I mean, that's pretty twisted, but I like that cover. <clears throat> Next, we got Underworld Unleashed, number one. I actually had this back in the 90s. And I believe it was a 90s book. Late 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 95. 95, it's up there. But I had this a long time ago. It's the first appearance of Neuron. But cool book. Then next up we got, he gave me a Scarlet Witch, number one. Uh, is this her, yeah, her first solo. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on. Gotta get a drink of tea. And then, this was cool, I didn't even know they had one of these, but it was a, Marvel Secret, Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number one, but it's the Halloween Comic Fest version. Oops. So I didn't even know that was a thing. So that's pretty cool, actually. And then we got Timeless number one with that old Ms. Minutes co cover. And it's the first appearance of uh, Mirden and than the Twilight Court. So, with all this multiverse stuff, you never know. That might that might actually pan out to be a nice little key there. And then, of course, he got me X-Force number one. I think I have a couple of these. But, so, but yeah, it's, you know, you can never have. And no, it is not the Deadpool rookie card one. I think that one's ran its course, I believe. And then last... <clears throat> but not least, y'all know that I'm not much of a, I'm not much on signatures. I'm not a big signature guy, but I've always said that there's a few legends that that whose signatures I wouldn't mind. And we always had this discussion about signatures, and I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want a signature on a big key book. To me, it's it's almost defacing it. I mean, I know I know people don't see it that way. You know, collectors don't see it that way, but to me, it it just, oh, it just seems like graffiti. You know, it's like graffitiing a work of art or something. And so, I'd rather have I'd rather have the signature on on an inexpensive book that's not such a big key. Um, for like I said, for that reason alone. Cause so you're not you're not defacing a you know big key book and also for the reason why I, why not give that dollar bin book a little little value bump but anyway but this is one of the legends um, of comics whose signature I do not mind having and it is on Hawkeye number one and it's limited to two hundred. It's number 281 out of 750, but it's Chuck Dixon. 
Now, I grew up on, or I say grew up, I was an adult when I started collecting comics, but I grew up in collecting with Chuck Dixon and a big fan, so I was not mad to get that. Even got the COA on the back of it, so that was really cool. So, Jason Todd, my guy, thank you, man. That was very generous of you, really nice of you. Um, I really appreciate that. That is awesome. Um, thank you again. And now we go into some uh, some random pickups. Uh, just one off of eBay, and then I did I did a little. I got to do a little comic book hunting at the flea market, and I found some pretty cool stuff. But picked this up off of eBay for a couple bucks. Not a key. Um, I just really love this cover. And I, I wished I would have looked it up before I uh, pulled this up, but I didn't remember. I didn't recognize the artist on it, but I just love this cover. And you know, some Justice League America uh, number one eight one thirty six, but just really cool. I I just love the cover, and I stumbled on it on eBay and thought, I'm getting it. Why not? But anyway, okay, so went to a little flea market. A couple towns over and spent a couple hours in there digging through a guy had quite a few comic books and <clears throat> he he was a comic book collector and he had a pretty good idea of the value on most of these and and i probably overpaid a dollar or two on them but i didn't care i was there i didn't have to pay shipping on it so it's a win-win but this is what i picked up first of all Protectors, number five from Malibu Comics. Dollar bin book all day long, but it's it's a gimmick cover that I love. And it's the one that's got the bullet hole. I'm a little pissed about it, to be honest with you, because I thought I was the innovator of comics with the bullet holes in them. But this predates my bloodshot number one. But it does it. And I know... And I'm going to argue that that is not a bullet hole. That is a hole punch. It's too clean and too perfect to be a bullet hole. So that's that's my story. I'm going to stick to it. But it goes all the way through to the entire comic book and out the back. So pretty cool little gimmicky cover. Like I said, just a dollar bin book. Nothing crazy, but I liked it. All right, now we get into some more... A few, few things. I got a... Uh, got a couple of uh, some older ones here i'm pretty happy about um the flash number 28 this is the first appearance of linda park i was happy to get that i think he had like three bucks on it um you know it could use a press and whatever but i'm not gonna have it graded so i'm not that worried about it and then i picked up a copy of this and this is why i'm not a this is why i don't grade comics <laughs> But he, I was like, wow, for $3? He had this for $3? I just pick it up. I've already got it, but it's an extra copy. And it's Crisis on Infinite Earths, number four, which was the first appearance of Quark, Lady Quark, Dr. Light, and Lord Volt, and also the second appearance of Constantine. I was so excited that I saw it in there for a couple bucks that I snatched it up and didn't look it over really well. And... That's what you get for doing that. It's split down the spine all the way up. But that's all right. It's all right for a couple bucks. A little low-grade copy. All right. Now we, get, now we get into some older, some good uh, Fantastic Four keys that I picked up. This one is just a... Uh, this is a cla just classic covers. Um, this is Fantastic Four 167, and it's Fantastic Four versus the Hulk, which is always a classic, but not as classic as, say, 166, where it's the battle of the Hulk versus Thing. Love the Hulk versus Thing covers. I'm a sucker for them, and they fetch a pretty good amount of money. I think high-grade ones of these are 20, 30 bucks. Um, this one, 
is in really good, decent condition. You know, I'd I'd say it's um, fine, very fine. So not bad. So I was happy to get that. Next up, Fantastic Four number one fifty, and this is the Marriage of Quicksilver and Crystal. Again, about three bucks, three or four bucks, I think. I got it for. So it's kind of cool. And this one's in a little rougher shape. Very good. Fine minus. And last for my haul video, little Silver Age goodness. This one is probably on the good side. A um, little lower grade, four, uh, maybe even a 3.5. But it is a uh, first appearance of Glor. Glor uh, excuse me. Uh, Glorith. I don't know who that is. Um, I just got it because it was some Silver Age Superboy. And I kind of dug the cover. But um, I wasn't mad at it. So for a couple bucks, I picked it up. <coughs> Why not, right? <coughs> but anyway, that is going to do it for this week's haul video. Man, um, let me know what you like. Um, I had, it was nice to be able to get out and do a little hunting. I don't get to do that very often. Um, so little flea market finds are always fun. Um, and probably, probably, you know, I, I picked those books up probably because I just wanted to be able to buy something and, and I'm not much of a Fantastic Four collector, but I thought the price is right. A little minor keys go in the key box. <clears throat> and like I said, probably, probably more of a, I didn't want to leave there and not get something kind of deal. You know what I mean? But anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Before y'all go, please, please, please hit that like button. It really helps grow the channel. Subscribe, comment, share, do all those things we love for you to do on YouTube. And that is going to do it for this one. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.